Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you all to the first Sunday of Lent, ESC. On this Sunday, the Word of God reminds us that as Christians, we are on a journey of faith. And on this journey, temptations are inevitable. Temptations, of course, in themselves are not sin, but they can lead to sin, depending on our responses to them. Temptations are invitations to sin. We have the willpower, the free will, to turn it down or to turn them down. There are attractions to sin. We can choose to resist the attraction. It is interesting that on the first Sunday of Lent, the gospel text is focused on the reality of temptation. Ordinarily, in human thinking, one should expect that with the practice of deeper piety, fasting, almsgiving, we should enjoy immunity from temptation. But dearly beloved in Christ, the reverse is the case. As this is in the 40 days of fasting, of almsgiving, of prayer last, so too do we have 40 days of severe temptation. Temptation could be the beginning of sin. So victory over temptation also begins with strategizing on how to deal with temptation. Because we have Christ who has come, as John 10, 10 tells us, John chapter 10, verse 10. He has come that we may have life and have it to the full. But we also have the enemy who has come, the liar, the devil, who has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He comes with plenty of enticements <clears throat> to confuse us. And because he is a liar, lies are more enticing than the truth. The truth is bitter, but lies can taste very sweet. It was that lie he told our first parent, precisely he, on what was hidden in the forbidden fruit that God just didn't want man and woman, humanity, to be like him. And the desire, the inordinate desire to become like God led woman to fall. A man, likewise, humanity fell from grace because of unnecessary ambition, because of the lack of contentment with what humanity had. 
of all created things, human beings are the only ones created in the image and likeness of God. As if that was not enough, he put everything under our control. Yet, because we were not contented, we gave in to that temptation that eat this fruit and become greater. So dearly beloved in Christ, the gospel text today is presented to us so that we can anticipate beforehand so that when temptations come we would not be caught on our ways. If Christ himself was tempted at a time when he isolated to pray we too will be tempted. And on Ash Wednesday I want to believe that a good number of us made great Lenten resolutions. Watch out. As the days count, these are the areas, key areas of attack. The devil will present sin to us as something very, very pleasurable, very, very good for us. Hardly do we, at the point of temptation, see the consequences of sin. Only the benefits are projected. And that is why sin becomes attractive. Otherwise, if put side by side sin and consequences of sin, nobody will be attracted to sin. For whatever sin we commit on earth is committed in time. But the consequences of sin go, go beyond time. It lingers on to eternity. So sin does not make sense at all, rationally. Because what does it profit us? to have any benefit in this world that is passing and to lose the, the life that has no end. It makes no sense. But yet, we are attracted to sin because temptation does not tell us the consequences ahead. i like us to Understand, too, that if temptations are inevitable on our journey of faith, then we should also know that one of the ways to deal with temptation is to remain on our mission, is to have the sense of purpose, If we are on our duty post, we are more likely to emerge victorious over temptation than when we choose to wander around aimlessly. Pay attention to how the temptation came to Christ in the gospel text. He was led by the Spirit he was on mission. Christ had gone into the wilderness to prepare for his public ministry. It was all the unfolding of the plans God had set in place for him. So he was in his natural habitat because he was on mission. He stood a better chance of overcoming the temptation because he was on course with God's plan. 
Very often we fall to temptation because we take ourselves to the devil. We find ourselves in places that are places for temptation. How do we ever think we are going to overcome it? We engage ourselves with activities that can make us to fall. When we do that, the chances are very slim for us to be victorious. If you take an animal from its, its natural habitat, it becomes more and more vulnerable. The fish can swim perfectly with speed in the water, but put it on the, on the ground, it loses its stamina. It has no sense of direction again. It becomes weak. Some of us fall repeatedly, repeatedly because of the kind of company that we keep. Ungodly company will lead us to sin because God has not set us on mission to remain in negative, immoral conversations. As long as we remain in those kind of conversations, they will lead us to sin. So within this season of Lent, it is good that we examine ourselves wherever we find ourselves. Am I here because God wants me to be here? Where am I now? Am I supposed to be at this place at this moment? If truly we are constantly on mission, temptations, of course, will come in severe ways, but we are going to be victorious because God will not leave us alone. If we think that temptations will not come because we have prayed hard, we have fasted, then we may be surprised and fall to it. This is the season when we reconcile, we forgive those who have wronged us. It's, you are going to notice that some of those you have forgiven will still repeat the same offenses more and more this season, just to put you to test. Would you not continue to forgive? We must expect this reality and deal with them the way Christ did. He was hungry and the temptations came. The first one in the form of turning stone into bread. Hunger may first one not even to think like I have the power. But if he had done that, then he would have misused the power of God. He would have performed a miracle earlier than when it was necessary. The whole plan would have changed. So Christ manifested a greater power, and that power is the power to control himself, not to control other things necessarily. That is the kind of power we should seek in this season of Lent. Let us not seek to control others, but to control ourselves, self-control, self-restraint. Man must not live on bread alone. Again, the temptation came in the form of, of beautiful things that the devil would give. See, 
one of the things that the devil stands out for, of course, which is more about his personality, is, is lies. What has the devil to give to Christ? But he's, ple he's pledging it. And that's exactly what happens. Many things the devil promises us he does not even have. Had Christ yielded to his request, it, it would still not be that he would have had the opportunity to give that because he didn't have in the first instance. You cannot give what you do not have. But the devil being a liar will tell us he can do it. And many of those promises are tabled before us even at this moment. How your life will be better if, if you divorce your, your husband, you divorce your wife. These are the benefits, these are all of this. How you may feel better if you change from becoming who you are, male to become female, female to become male. It is until it has taken effect that you now realize what has been stolen from you because the agenda of the devil is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Nothing good comes from him. He has never been good. So when temptations come, the pleasure may be very, very enticing, but they are passing so momentary, the consequences could be lasting. Dearly beloved in Christ, as we, have, um, as we arm ourselves with prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, let us be mindful of this reality and emerge victorious as Christ by remaining focused on our mission as Christians. We have not been called to look for Satan to contend with, but should he come on our way, God will be by our side. Let us go about the work as Christians. Let us embark on this journey with Christ. And his victory will be ours on Easter Sunday. May he bless us and his words in our hearts through Christ, our Lord. <clears throat>